Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Go So Beautiful. My name's Becky, and this is an early edition of Friday Sews. By the time you see this, it will probably be Christmas Eve, and I just wanted to pop on and share a little bit about what I've been doing in my sewing room. I missed last week because I had a minor medical procedure. It was done in the doctor's office. And while it was minor, the recovery period took a little bit longer. Anyway, I'm fine now. Thanks to Jen from Today in Jen's Sewing Room for starting the hashtag Friday Sews. Many sewing YouTubers have joined in on this hashtag and um, you can share, you can search the hashtag Friday Sews and find lots and lots of other sewing YouTubers. So what I wanted to talk about today was my, what I've been working on and what I'm going to work on. And a little saga about a pair of pajamas. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever done this, but I started out with an idea of for some pajamas and and this was for the I'm So Festive Challenge that was hosted by Delilah from Simply Delilah and Kim from Kim Gaddy Sews and Lisa from One Lisa Show. They all did a great job and um, lots of people were participating in this hashtag. So it was getting to be close to the time when the challenge was going to... Um, was going to close up and I really needed to get my entry made. So originally I had planned to make a top of some sort out of this flannel fabric with the cardinals and light blue background. Well, I figured that any top I made was going to look like pajamas because of the coloring and so forth. So I thought, well, I'll buy some fabric to match, to make pants out of, to match it. So I couldn't find, I was in Ohio at the time and I could not find the cardinal fabric. So I bought this light blue with the snowflake flannel, flannel fabric. And I went ahead and made the pajama pants using this simplicity pattern. It's a unisex pattern and the actual number is S9217 and according to the measurements on the pattern I made a size large I believe let me see oh here we go actually I made a medium and these pants were, they were huge. So, and you could tell they were actually cut for men. They had a sewn on waistband. I didn't really like that. So I modified it and made a few modifications and they fit fine. Well, then I went to cut out the shirt out of the cardinal fabric. And it also was very, was really large and I didn't actually put all the pieces on before I started cutting it out and then unfortunately realized I did not have enough fabric to make the whole top. Not to mention the fact that this this is the back. I don't know if you can see but it comes down and I even shortened it. It comes down almost to middle of my thigh. So this was going to be too big and I was very disappointed and I thought I'm going to make another top. Well, I couldn't find another top and I was going to buy more fabric. So I looked on the Joanne website and I was going to do curbside pickup only I could not find this cardinal fabric. So I chose another fabric, which is 
this really cute polar bear fabric. And I thought, well, I'll just make a whole nother set of pajamas. And I um, made my order online, went there to pick it up, and went, walked inside to get it because I needed some other things that I hadn't ordered. And I found out that they had plenty of the cardinal fabric and the um, snowflake fabric, but I had already ordered the polar bear fabric. So I, I ended up going ahead and buying that, brought it home and proceed. I had washed it and proceeded to cut it out thinking I was being very savvy because it was so narrow. I folded, opened it up so that the salvage, it was the whole salvage. And then I folded it over and forgot that the polar bears were all running horizontal. So when I folded it over and cut the pants out, it made one side with the polar bears going one way and the other side with the polar bears going the other way. Well, I could live with that. No big deal. Then I decided I was going to make a top, only I did not want to use that simplicity pattern, shirt pattern, because it was so large. So I looked in my stash for another shirt pattern and I probably had some shirt patterns I could have used, but I wanted something that was a little bit um, roomy and the ones that I had seemed to be kind of fitted. So anyway, I decided to make this top McCall's M7093 and I wanted to make view C with the three quarter length sleeves and it does have a high low hem which I'm not crazy about but I thought I would just make it straight across and I started cutting that top out and realized I had to I was going to have to piece the back together both the front and the back were cut on the fold I needed to piece the back to make a seam in the center of the back which I thought was no big deal so I cut one piece out and then I was I thought I was so smart I cut the other piece out so that the polar bears were all going the same way and then when I took them apart I realized I had cut two of the same side out. So I kind of panicked and thought I was kicking myself and hitting myself in the head. Anyway, I finally managed to squeeze out the another side, the opposite side, but I had to piece that second back half in the middle. So I don't know if you can see it, but this is the back. No, that's the front. This is the back of my shirt. You can see there's a seam here in the middle. And then on this side, right here, I had to piece it. And I mean, I'm only gonna sleep in these pajamas so nobody will know. In addition to that though, I needed some contrast. And at first I found some light blue fabric, which was flannel, but it just didn't feel very soft. And so I was kind of, you know, scratching my head, trying to figure out what to do. And then I remembered I actually have had some white flannel fabric. And I was like, super, I had plenty of that white flannel fabric. I had enough for the sleeves. I had enough for the sides. And I went ahead and made it up. Well, the first time I tried it on, I noticed it was a little bit snug, a little bit tricky getting over my head. So I decided to open up this side seam here to make a little placket with some buttons. And I really didn't want to make buttons and buttonholes. And I remembered I had purchased a cam snap kit. So I put these cute little poppers, cam snaps, and now it makes it pretty easy to get on. So I'll put a picture of me wearing this. It, it really is cute. The only problem is, uh-oh, this one came apart. 
The only problem is this neckline is really wide and I really like my pajamas to be kind of snuggly. So even though this is cute, I think I still want to make another top. So that's the pajama saga. I apologize if that took too long, but um, it was a very important learning experience. <laughs> Don't you love those learning experiences? All right, so now I was um, thinking about, I did, like I said, I did make a pair of pants with this snowflake pajamas pattern snowflake fan flannel and snowflake flannel and I wanted to make a top to go with it and I had purchased extra fabric for that and I started to make this shirt again and it y'all it just seems so big that I'm hesitant to make it um, I know I could shorten it but for some reason, I, I'm just not wanting to make it. So I may actually buy another pajama pattern, which there are plenty out there. But um, I don't know. I've put it on the back burner for right now. Um, I did want to mention also, since the, this pattern, this simplicity pattern, the pants were so big, I decided to use the itch to stitch pine cove pajama pattern for my pants. I had made this last year and um, I actually had a twall and made a twall and those pants fit really good. So I used that pattern to make my polar bear pajamas and um, I would have made the top, but I don't think I, I didn't have enough fabric for that. So anyway, on to the next thing. I had um, mentioned that I was going to make a mantle cover for one of my Christmas projects and I do have all of the materials for that. However, since it's about two days before Christmas, I doubt that anybody's going to be working on making a mantle cover. Nonetheless, I may still make it and film it and post it as a tutorial and if you care to look at it, that would be wonderful. Otherwise, you can save it. I'll repost it next year. So the other thing I worked on this week, which actually took a lot more time than I thought, was a big curtain. I had a friend who asked me to make a window covering for a window in her house, which asked me to make a big window covering. It, the window was about 12 feet, five inches big. And she didn't want any, she didn't really want it to open. She wanted just one big panel. And I said, sure, I can do that. Well, I was buried in, <laughs> I was nearly buried in the fabric. And um, I'll show you a picture of me sewing it here. Um, it was quite wieldy, if that's a word and um, was pretty easy sewing. I mean, just straight stitching, but managing that much fabric is really difficult. And then the other issue is trying to make everything straight or the same length, all, you know, the appropriate length. So I made that, I delivered it to, she came and picked it up yesterday and um, we'll see if it's going to be if it's going to hang straight, if everything works out, I'm a little nervous, but at the same time, I'm, I think I did a pretty good job. So now what I want to work on, I, when I was buying this polar bear fabric, I of course was looking around the store and I love to look in the remnant bin. And I found this, um, Burgundy stretch velvet. I had a piece. So I found this burgundy stretch velvet and there was just about a yard. It may have been a little bit shy. And I thought, ooh, that would make a pretty little top to wear for Christmas Eve service. 
or Christmas or for church the day after Christmas. We don't really dress up at my church, so I didn't really want to make anything too fancy, but I do love to have a nice little special occasion kind of looking top or whatever outfit. So I went ahead and bought it. It was um, half price, so I got it for about $8, I think, maybe less. And I thought it would make a cute little turtleneck with, and I figured I wouldn't have enough for long sleeves, so I was going to make it short sleeved. And I found this great pattern. Actually, I found a couple of patterns, but I had this one in my stash. This is New Look 6143. And I decided to make View B, only I was going to make it with short sleeves. It's an easy raglan pattern, and I don't think I'd ever made this. So um, I went ahead and cut it out, and I had just the right amount of fabric. And it says it's an easy two hour shirt. So I think I can get this made between, actually I'm gonna try and make it today. Um, and then once I get it made, I'll show y'all how it looks. But I got a little bit sidetracked from my sewing plans for December, November, December, whatever. And, um, but I think I'll just get right back on track after Christmas. One other thing I wanted to share with y'all is I got an early Christmas present. I actually got it. I got it on Black Friday, Thanksgiving weekend, when I was visiting my dad. As you all know, I have been having lots of surgery problems. Not problems as much as I hate threading my surgery. And I started looking at the air thread sergers that were available. And I did a little research. I checked out the baby lock serger. I checked out, I was going to check out a Bernina. Um, actually, it's a Burnett serger, but they didn't have it in stock at the store where I was looking at the baby lock. When we went to visit my dad, I wanted to try the Janome air thread serger. So I went to a local sewing machine shop there where my dad lives and they did not have the Janome, but they had an Elna and they said, this has got the exact same machine parts as the Janome. And the prices were all pretty much the same. I was getting a basic air thread model serger and the Elna was very nice. But I still had my eye on the Burnett, and I had seen that the Burnett B64 air thread serger was on sale on several websites. But I really wasn't sure I wanted to purchase it through a website and have it shipped. I really wanted to purchase one through a, a sewing machine shop. So I called another local sewing machine shop where they share sell Berninas and Burnettes and they had the Burnett B64. They said, we have one that we just took out of the box and it's on the floor. And I said, would you be willing to match the price of this online store? And they said, well, we'll sell you the floor model for the online price. So I said, okay, I'll come and look at it Friday after Thanksgiving. So I went there, the, the machine had just been taken out of the box, literally, and hadn't been used very much at all. So um, I sat there with one of the um, sales associates. She showed me how it worked and I loved it. And um, my husband said, okay, I'll get it for you for Christmas. So let me show you what it looks like. So here it is. Um, it has an extension table which comes on and off, which makes it nice for sewing bigger projects. I think there's a little thing you push. Anyway, and it also has a free arm. 
and um, which is very nice. And it has a knee lever, which allows you to do hand-free sewing. I'm not real, I've used that a little bit, but um, sometimes it gets away in the way of the presser fit. But I am just really excited about this. I've used it quite a bit since I've gotten it. And um, I haven't actually had to re-thread it, but it does have the air thread technology. I don't know if you can see it. Take this off. But right here, um, when you're getting ready to thread the loopers, you just um, engage the, the air tubes. They connect right here and then you push your, put your thread in this little hole and then push a button right here and it threads the whole thing. So this is my Christmas present and I am as happy as can be. So that's the Burnett B64 airlock and um, maybe I'll show you a little bit more when I have more time. So that's pretty much it for me today. I do want to mention one thing and pay tribute to my Aunt Bonnie who passed away last week and she was my mom's twin sister and in many ways like a second mother to me and the one thing that was so special about Aunt Bonnie was that she loved sewing and she has sewn all her life just like my mother we were all kind of like sewing buddies. <laughs> and unfortunately she was not doing very well. And um, it's probably, I really hope that, I really know that she is at rest now. And so I am thankful for that. But her name was Bonnie and um, she, used to do a lot of alterations. She, in fact, she did them for some men's clothing stores. And I know that one year she earned enough money to buy herself her own car with cash. <laughs> so there is money to be had in making, in sewing, but um, she was really a very expert seamstress. And I just wanted to say, Rest in peace, Aunt Bonnie. So that's all I have for today. I hope you all have a lovely holiday, a Merry Christmas. And I will, I'm not sure I'm going to make a video next week. I'm going out of town for a little bit, but I probably will be back before December 31st. And I hope you all have, I hope you all have a safe and happy holiday. If you have time, do some sewing and go so beautiful. Bye-bye.